Thanks. It's a pleasure, Lord DeVessi, to have you speaking you. to us here today. Tell us first and foremost about your family and how you guys became connected with Abbey Leaks. Well, originally, um, my family were from England and they came over to Ireland in 15 something or other um, as uh, Church of Ireland and Protestant clergymen up in the north in Coleraine and they change religion about every two months in order to try and stay on the winning side and um, the uh, uh, most direct ancestor that I can easily claim back directly to um, was a clergyman up in Coleraine whose son then went on to be an archbishop, Archbishop of Tuam and it was his son Thomas who was also a bishop uh, who became ultimately Bishop of Ossery in Kilkenny, who started the association with Abbey Leaks. He married um, Miss Muschamp and her, his father-in-law uh, had land interests in this area and that was the first connection. And that would have been the early years of the 18th century, so 1720, 1730, around that time. Originally Abbey Leaks was on marshy land, but it has moved into where it is now. And your family had something to do with that. That's right. Um, the original settlement of Abbey Leaks was because of the Abbey of Abbey Leaks, and it was a Cistercian monastic settlement. And the non-monastic um, buildings and inhabitants all clustered around the Abbey, which was close to the river. But the area where the houses were, and they were very modest houses, you know, really basic and, and, and um, not made of, of, of long-lasting materials. They wouldn't have been stone or anything like that. They were all near the abbey, near the river, and of course the land was very marshy and prone to floods, and there were no drains, and the conditions were pretty grim. So after the abbey, of course, had gone in the, after the dissolution of, of the monasteries, my family, who were the big landowners owning all of this area, um, laid out this new town of Abbey Leaks on what was farmland. And there are maps showing this, what is now Abbey Leaks, as farmland and just fields with little pencil lines on it, showing this is where the main street is going to be, and these are where the side streets are going to be. And they just built it like a kid would make a Lego project for a rainy afternoon. And that was the, the origin of Abbey Leaks. And of course then when this town had, uh, w was formed, I suppose, you started business and generated employment around the area. That was the next step, I and mean, to get the town established and to get commerce and to get it on the map. So um, to try and get the transport routes to go through it, and originally that was the road, which isn't along the line of the present road to Port Leash, but the Dublin road came through it. And much later, the railway line, there was a lot of uh, influence used to make sure that the new Dublin to Waterford railway line went through Abbey Leaks because that was hugely important to commerce and transport because it meant that um, your market goods could go freely and quickly up to Dublin, which was, uh, made them much more saleable. So there was, the transport was hugely important. And carrying on the back of that, all the other entrepreneurial um, setups of mills and so forth that my family encouraged. There were a lot of mills um, powered by water with incredibly intricate uh, water schemes in order to provide the fall of water at the site of each of the mills because the land immediately around Abelix is not tremendously hilly. So there was huge engineering works to get water to the mills and there was a worsted mill and there was a flour mill and they, these were big big affairs. Um, and another mill where the uh, leash fox hunt hounds are kept now. So those were three mills. And then um, the woodlands here were very important and forestry. My family were always involved in forestry. And that provided a lot of employment. And they set up a sawmills, which again provided a lot of employment in the town. And then by the early 20th century, um, there was a realization that was not really much for girls, ladies in the town. They couldn't obviously work in the sawmill. So my family started a carpet factory in the main street of Abedix on a site that's occupied by Bramley's now. Um, and that made carpets, handwoven carpets. And a lot of research went into this to find the suitable designs. And at that time, my family were very involved in uh, the arts and crafts movement and design and so forth. And they were basically Turkish design carpets. 
uh, following a, um, a technique that was bought from the neighbouring landlord in Durrow. It was a particular stitch that had been developed by Lord Ashbrook and my family acquired the rights for this so they could set up this carpet and they made wonderful quality carpets and there are photographs of all the girls and ladies of the town working in the carpet factory all in beautiful little pinafores and so forth and they made carpets for they were very very good quality carpets so they made them for um, really smart houses all the big stately homes and in those days when um, families came they went to stay with one another very often and when a sort of smart family would come and stay with my family in Abedique's house they were judging by the visitors book of the carpet factory it would appear that they were kind of frog marched down to the carpet factory on day two and not let out until they bought a carpet so a lot of these carpets ended up in some of the more famous and grand houses in Ireland and also in England and and the Titanic as well there were carpets made by the Abedique's carpet factory for the White Star Ocean Liner shipping line, uh, including the Titanic. Thomas Vesey, who was the Bishop of Ossery, uh, he married um, the daughter of uh, somebody called Denny Muschamp, who had land interests in this area. And he actually leased property in Abilix initially, and then subsequently bought the freehold in a very long convoluted story which ended up in legal cases and lawsuits and there was lawsuits going on for almost a hundred years in Dublin but eventually by about 1770 it was all established that um, the Vesey family because that was my family name had uh, uh, the, the freehold rights of this area and it was only when they had the confidence that the lawsuits were behind them that they built this uh, wonderful Georgian house by the very famous and fashionable architect James Wyatt, which is Abedique's house, which was in my family and it's where I grew up and um, we sold it in the 1990s. And so that was when the family really put firm roots down here. Although I think there was an earlier house called Napton House, which I believe my family lived in before Abedique's was, house was built in 1773-4, around that time. And then after that, my family have always been based here and um, have always been resident here and were never absentee landlords at any stage. So they, they stayed here throughout the famine and uh, were quite involved in, in the relief works in the famine and soup kitchens and, and employment schemes to um, help all the tenants through that horrendously appalling time. Um, so they were very, very much here, hands-on roots down here and not, you know, going off to London and spending the time uh, there. And we've kind of been here ever since. My family were almost obsessed with education. They okay. were tremendously interested in education and the realisation that through education became a chance for everyone to better themselves and that was for the good of everybody. And actually only recently I discovered that um, the first Viscount Estevesi, which had been like 1770, was showing a visitor at that time around her new school. So it goes way back as far as 1770. And the history, the amount of schools in Abilix, and they would all have belonged to my family or been leased you know, out by my family. And the second Viscount de Vesi, who was the one who was most responsible probably for laying out the new town, he was particularly interested in, in education and there are letters that he, from his period that he wrote and received from a very famous educational pioneer called Pestalozzi, um, who was a, a sort of uh, uh, similar to Montessori, you've probably heard of the Montessori children's schools. Pestalozzi was, was Swiss and he had very um, radical ideas for education, very um, new um, ideas for that day where the children would be treated much more sympathetically and with less discipline and allowed to discover the pleasure of actually learning themselves. And so um, John, the second Viscount of Essie, was very interested in that. And um, there's a list of, all, I think there were about nine schools in Abedix at one stage. Um, astonishing um, history of education and my family being very, very 
interested in, in encouraging education and starting new schools. And um, this building that we're in now was the one of those buildings. It was the Patrician Brothers School. And there's another very beautiful building at the other end of the town that was built in two stages, one in 1843, which is one date stone at one end of the building, and enlarged in 1893, 50 years later, which may appear later on. You might have a shot of it in this, in this film, I imagine. But they're just examples of all the different school buildings and the efforts that my family made to provide the best education possible for people in this area of all denominations, what they weren't, although one was aligned to Church of Ireland and the other was aligned, the Patrician Brothers, to the Catholic Church. I mean, education was provided for everyone, no matter what. There's a plaque outside Market House. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, the Market House would have been originally built as part of the original uh, plan for the, for the town because the Market House would have been hugely important for town at that time in the 1790s because that would have been where the commerce would have taken place on market days. Um, so that would have, the original market house on that site would have been part of that plan and it would have had those three arches that you see now. But um, over the years it has been enlarged and um, uh, improved um, over the years. The in, I think about um, uh, Edward, early Edwardian times, about 1904, was one refurbishment and that was done by subscription. Um, the people in the town and my family all chipped in as a memorial for the Viscount de Vesey who had just died before then, who was a very popular man. Um, so it has been restored on a couple of occasions um, and there are, that forms a sort of living memorial to the fourth Viscount and then there are other monuments around town to other generations of my family. Um, and it's nice that they all, a lot of them seem to be done by subscription by people in the town who actually contributed to make these memorials for various members of my family over the years. So they seem to have been well liked, which is nice for me.